Welcome to another episode of Risk. This is another 4 player fixed card game on classic Risk map with blizzards. Settings, Alliances, Balance Blitz Dice Rolls and 60 seconds per turn. I said beginner rank is a minimum rank when hosting this game meaning that my opponents could be ranked anywhere from beginner to grandmaster. There are no novices in this game. Judging by the stats the black player seems to be the most decent opponent out of all of three, he wins every fourth game he plays on average having a winning percentage of 24%, and then the green and blue players really look like low ranked players, the blue player wins his every seventh or eighth game having a winning percentage of 14%, and the green player wins every sixth game he plays having a winning percentage of 17%. So if we consider winning every fourth game in four player games as average, then the black player is a very average player, and the blue and green players are quite below average, however that doesn't mean that we have to underrate them. And oh no, the blue player is taking my three troops down after us making an alliance, but alright, it seems he will be going for Australia, so that's completely fine I guess. Actually I really like it because with both of them possibly fighting over Australia, I already having South America, will continue getting strong and might even expand, and maybe even really affording crush the black player after he captures North America. And for now when he doesn't have any continent at all I could totally afford being his good ally. And look at the bottom of Asia guys, two beginners are fighting for Australia, isn't that the nicest thing you could see in the world? That's totally magnificent. No Australia, no win, either get it at any cost or lose the game. Australia is the only continent with which you can win, go for any other continent and immediately lose. But talking seriously what was the purpose for Green to try going for Australia with him having no troops in it, I think the best continent choice for him would have been Europe. And then the blue player by seeing that the green player will be desperate to get Australia, could have just went for Africa. But I mean he managed to manual roll the green player's army successfully, so that's good for him. And I really like his enthusiasm with these manual rolls, I think he is going to be a very good ally, I just feel it. So it's just a bad thing that it seems that the green player left the game. I would have really preferred him stay in the game and fight blue over having him as a bot. As now I might not have that much of advantage as I was supposed to get, but I mean with the blue player capturing Australia, I will take over Africa, so I should still be in a good position, and just hopefully the black player doesn't capture North America immediately. He moved his troops out from Africa so I wanted to be a good ally and remove my troops from North America too to increase his trust in me. So I crushed my 3 troops into 4 troops of the green player expecting that I will get a bad blitz roll taking 0 troops of the green player down, but I actually managed to take down even 2 of them, so that's not really ideal situation for me, maybe I shouldn't have been that friendly. Well anyway, what I think is going to happen is the blue player going to focus on wiping the green player out from Asia, and the black player waste troops on capturing North America, so then I might invade him. Anyway, as you saw I had an A troop set, so what do you think, should I have tried taking the black player out? I mean it might have depended on how good a blitz rolls I would have gotten through the smaller armies first in Europe. But I don't know, it really seemed as a quite a big risk, and I knew that he was going to wipe out green and blue's troops from North America so I decided not to, as I would be able to invade him and prevent him from holding it to sustain my own advantage. And I was a bit hoping that he doesn't trade in a set at 4 cards, so I would have taken him out with 5, but as you just saw unfortunately he did. So anyway, should I invade him right now or not? Well, I'm really tempted, but he seems to have so much trust in me that he doesn't even guard his border against me. And I wouldn't like to get into a conflict with him, as then it might give the advantage to the blue player. So all in all I decided to take down the green player's troops in Europe since wanting to stick loyal to both of my allies, but actually I'm not happy with my gameplay at all. After trading in a set I had only 8 troops fewer than both of my allies combined, so I think I should have definitely invaded black with him having no ability to retaliate at all for a turn, 
and especially when the blue player was sending me an attack request to attack the black player by himself. So I think that was a really bad move for me to wipe out the green player's troops from Europe instead of that. As besides already mentioned reasons the black player got to take the green player out, so now he ended up being as strong as me while there is the blue player who is still relatively strong as well. So it was such a bad move for me. But as you can see the blue player ended up invading me instead of attacking black, so maybe he would have done the same even if I had attacked black, so I'm not guaranteed that the blue player would have stuck being a loyal ally. Or maybe the blue player was just not satisfied with me at all with me not invading black, so this is why he invaded me, maybe he decided to make an alliance with the black player instead. And I mean an overall my biggest army in North Africa which was unleashed towards blue, probably looked very threatening to the blue player, so that might have made the blue player not trust me even more. And I mean in the blue player's position I would not have trusted myself either. But alright, the black player is still in the alliance with me. I thought that it might have been possible for him to make the alliance with blue and sent him the attack request to attack me, but with black attacking blue even after me additionally capturing Europe, it more seemed that the blue player had decided to attack me by his own. And unfortunately he continues focusing on me, I really thought that with the black player crushing his troops he will attack black, as that would probably be a natural low rank player's response, but he decided to manual roll me. So since he wouldn't potentially suicide on me I decided to send the alliance request to him. But alright, our alliance has been remade. And obviously with the black player getting in lead I wouldn't have considered weakening blue in that turn even if I wanted, with the blue player having a relatively small army, so not to make the black player having as many troops as me and the blue player combined. As you can see I ended up getting betrayed by black but since I remade the alliance with the blue player and with blue attacking some territories of black to increase my trust, I still consider myself to be in a similarly good situation. So now instead of being allies with black, I will be an ally with blue, what I mean is that the most important thing that I'm still allies with one of them, that both of them don't team up on me. The blue player sends me thumbs ups and hearts so hopefully he is going to attack black. As if he just decided to sit in Australia being the Australian turtle, then the actual situation wouldn't look as great to me. I mean I and the black player are as strong in comparison with each other, so I couldn't attack the black player as much as I want, I have to be careful to not break the balance of the game in the blue player's favor, and at the same time try not to annoy the black player too much so he wouldn't accidentally or on purpose break the balance of the game in the blue player's favor either, by either getting very emotional with me or not realizing that he would be over attacking me. So that could be a little bit complicated in a 3 player situation if the Australian player turtles. But alright, it seems the blue player disconnected and left the game. And to be honest that disconnection looks very random, so I think it is possible that he could come back. But I mean either way it makes me sense to crush one of the black player's armies anyway. The balance of the game would be sustained even if the blue player suddenly comebacks. And what I decided to do is to additionally capture Europe, I mean it unleashed the black player's army but I think it was totally worth it with me fortifying and defending that border against his army well. And with him failing to break through Europe, I'm really happy with my decision. Also as you saw I put a smaller army of troops in a territory of the Middle East also, it was to protect against the blue bot. As otherwise that risk of unleashing Black's army might have gone in vain with the blue bot breaking through Africa and Europe. And now with the blue bot fortifying his army next to me, I had to make his army some space to be able to attack other territories as well, as otherwise my Middle East army would be crushed, and also at the same time I took over Australia as why to let the bot hold it when it was unguarded with no troops in it. I knew that the black player didn't have a set at 3 cards so I left him for another turn. And now it seems that he left the game. Well I'm not sure on that because it didn't say that he went offline. But one way or another it makes the most of sense to take him out right now anyway. So let's take him out. And then I think I would have no problems dealing with the blue player as well. 
even if he suddenly comes back to the game, as at this point I became stronger than him. And with me getting tons of troops next turn the game will be over. It will be a GG and then we will check out what were the ranks of my opponents. And alright, the blue player was a beginner, the green player was an intermediate, and the black player was an expert. 